Hey guys, welcome back to Exotic Car Hacks. And today we are talking about the Lamborghini Gallardo. Now, why are we talking about this car specifically? Because we have always talked about the best hacks. And in this particular segment, we're gonna take a look at why the Lamborghini Gallardo is indeed not only recession proof, but one of the best hacks out there for those of you wanting to get in and out of cars without losing any money. We're gonna take a look at this specific car, then we're gonna go back to my office and look on the whiteboard and really see where do the numbers make sense? Now first, let's check out the body because this is a 2012. I actually used to own this car. It is currently now owned by Exotics Hunter and it is for sale. It is very, very rare, uh, but this is as rare as Lamborghini Yardas come. Now you're gonna find out why in just a second. This used to be my actual old car. This is a 2012 LP550 with the premium wheels and it has something very, very exciting, which you're gonna notice right here, if I can actually open it is it has a six-speed manual transmission. Like the six-speed manual transmission is as rare as it comes in the LP uh, 560 and 550 Lamborghinis, not like the first gen cars, which were very, very common. So this car basically costs 200,000 more than its previous counterpart, which is the exact same car with an e-gear transmission. Now, if you're ever buying a Gallardo, there's a couple of things you really need, especially these Gen 2s more than anything else. And the first thing is a clear glass bonnet. No matter what, you cannot get away with not having a clear glass bonnet. That, that's something you just have to have no matter what. A backup camera is incredibly helpful. The nav unit, of course, most of these are standards. And there are other nuances, such as having cross-stitch seats versus having little uh, just flat uh, stitching in there that will make a significant difference. But overall, the majority of these cars come with a very simple design, very few options, and the majority of them are priced roughly in the two to 250 range, depending on what kind of uh, 550, 560 Performante, Super Logaire models, etc. We'll look at the options, etc., on the whiteboard itself, but I wanted to show you right here what the car really looked like. Uh, it's an exciting car. Now we're gonna sit in it so you can see the the room and, and how it really functions. Now this, like I said, is as rare as it comes. So this isn't necessarily the best hack opportunity. Uh, it's more of a collector grade car because of course of the uh, six speed manual transmission, which is gated and fantastic. Now, one of the things you'll notice is lots of headroom, sounds fantastic, a lot of very easy to use panels. And of course, because this one is gated, you're not gonna get that a kind of jerk you get from the e-gear transmission again because these were only available as a single clutch car fantastic car all around especially for a first time hacker because these you'll see from the numbers have been very very solid in general both from a reliability standpoint and very solid uh as a as a financial kind of purchase as well so i wanted to kind of show you because i always went i'm five seven so here you can see how much room i have how exciting the car is and how simple its design is. I think it's still timeless. I think down the road, these will become more collector cars than they are currently. But as of now, they're still not collector grade car unless they have this wonderful shiny gated six speed uh, manual thing. Other than that, that's basically it. The car is very, very simplistic uh, and still runs very well. A pretty bulletproof car all around. So let's get to my office. Let's take a look at the numbers and let's see how recession proof and how good of a hack the Lamborghini Gallardo really is. Let's go. All right, so let's talk specifically about Gallardos now. Let's look at the numbers. We saw the car, we like the car. But there are some things to know about Gallardos before we get started. The first one is that in 2004, the Gallardo was introduced and it was its first year, and that led us all the way to 2008. Those are what we call the first gen cars. So just keep in mind, if you're looking at those, those are not the Gallardos we're specifically talking about. The majority of these cars have gearbox issues and are incredibly uncomfortable and terrible to drive. If you are accounting to buy a first generation Gallardo, they are fantastic sounding and are great to drive as long as you get a six-speed manual transmission. Those will run you in the mid-150s and are also very bulletproof hacks, but that is not the focus here because the volume of those is significantly less. So there are some things you need to know about the ones we are talking about, and they are 2009 to 2014 models. Like, there are some subtle differences, so you should be aware of it. The majority of 2009 and 2010s are the LP560. This is the all-wheel drive model, and the one that is specifically a little bit more expensive, because usually during the, in the Lamborghini line, you have the all-wheel drive model come out first, it is a higher sticker and then a rear-wheel drive model, and that one is called the LP550. 
650. Now there are variations in the LP550. There is what they call a Balboni model. Uh, this was because of the race car driver Balboni. I don't even know how you write his name, but the point is these particular special edition cars bring a little bit more money as much as five to 10K more than a, the exact same car of nature. But the point here that I'm trying to make is that if you look at the LP560 and LP550, they are both really good cars. This one is going to be rear wheel drive. This one is going to be all wheel drive. That's really the only difference between the two models. Uh, one comes, yeah, I guess, with more shit on it. Now, the last generation of this is that there's also an LP550 and 560, what they call final edition. Now, these final editions are basically 2013 and 2014 and have a few subtle changes such as headlights, uh, I'm sorry, not headlights, but front and rear bumpers, side skirts, uh, and a few uh, trim things on the inside that make it a little bit more exciting, like different wheels, etc. But doesn't really, uh, it's not really necessarily worth more. It's just something that's more desirable. You may or may not like the front bumper design. Some people have mixed feelings. I've always said if you can get a 13 or 14 final edition for less money or similar money than you would a regular one, you typically take it because it makes more sense. Otherwise, you don't necessarily go seeking it. It's just as good. Now, because all of these cars have now been out for so long, they're over 10 years old, all of these can now be hacks and all of them can be blended in together. Meaning if you found a 2009 with incredibly low miles versus a 2014 with high miles, I would still consider 2009 first, even though the years are off, right? So that's something you just have to consider, but there are some things you have to know about the car if you're going to be hacking it. The first thing is that the majority of these cars can now be bought between 120,000 to 150,000 and anything above that uh, is going to be Performante money. So there is Performante models that are like the special trim and super Leguerre models, which we're not talking about today because those are more collector models. And there's also a Squad Corsa model, which is also not necessarily something we're talking about because we're talking about hacks, the ability to get in, get out of the actual hack. And again, don't forget, if you don't know what car hacking is, there is an actual link to learning this in detail for free in the description. You can also join Exotic Car Hacks, the greatest community of car hackers in the world. The only place we actually teach you where you can actually enjoy Lamborghini for less than 500 bucks a month. And we literally break that down for you in the course. But here you're looking at why this particular Gallardo is a really good hack. And this is the range of dollar you want to be in. Now think about the 120K being a 2009-2010 uh, with maybe 20 to 25K miles, and then take a look at the 150K car being probably a 2010 to 2013 and having roughly around uh, five to 15,000 miles. So these, these two kind of segments of cars are all hackable. So it's not like if you buy one at 120, you're safe. If you buy one at 150, you're not. They're all hackable. The, the point is to understand the range of dollar and what you're really getting. Because you're basically driving this 5,000 mile car to 8,000 or 10,000 mile car to 13,000. And here you're driving a 20,000 mile car to 25,000. So there's still gonna be there, but there's going to be different types of buyers for these as you go sell them. Because a 120K car is gonna attract someone with a bargain. A 150K car is gonna attract someone that wants a Gallardo specifically, an enthusiast. These two different models are both hack okay models, but they're gonna attract a different crowd. Now I showed you this specifically with the R8 as well, that there are two generations of R8s, one for bargain hunters and one for people who truly enjoy the R8 and want a better driving experience. So if you're going to be buying a Gallardo, you have to keep this range in mind. If I was gonna say, where is the majority of the hack? If we looked at it like some of the other cars, we're looking at 120, we're looking at 150, somewhere between right here between 130 and 140 is our 10K margin. Remember we did this for the other cars as well. There's 10K right there in between. That's how you can narrow that uh, dollar down. So it's this is 130, right? And this is 140. So the ideal car is going to be around 10 to 15,000 miles and is gonna be right here between 130 and 140 and really not gonna move much based on the additional miles you put on. This is how, remember what we talked about the other videos, it is all about bringing down the margin of error to just $10,000. Everyone can afford to drive a Lamborghini for five, 800 bucks a month, and that's not gonna hinder you too much. And again, if you wanna learn how to save on taxes, insurance, registration, all these things that uh, most people think of and think are unaffordable, again, take 
the actual course and the training and learn how to do that. But the car itself, we're talking about a 10,000 margin of error, which is basically where you get that spread over 12 months and that gives you $800 margin of error at its worst case scenario, which is pretty exciting for Lamborghini. Now, part of the reason I tell you to focus on what we consider to be the LP560 and LP550 over the first generation is because these are the less problematic cars. They have uh, single clutch transmissions, but they are lifetime clutches, meaning they are not meant to be replaced like the first generation of gearboxes that continuously went through clutches every 20,000 miles. In this particular case, while it is a single clutch, it just still works really well. It's a little bit jerky, but it still is reliable. In addition to that, these cars have been very reliable generally and so far have been pretty bulletproof. There are issues to look for uh, and they're more cosmetic than anything else. Leather peeling, the back of seats getting damaged from rubbing on the back. Uh, mainly spiders are more problematic when it comes to tops and also for the sun damaging the tops and damaging the seats and the leather when the tops are down. You'll also notice that a lot of doors may look wrinkly uh, on the inside and those doors are because again water got in between someone left the top down or the heat took its toll on the on the door panels and seats. These are very important to kind of note and one of the reasons we say follow the coop more than the spider. If you want a spider it's still very much hackable but again you have to consider making sure you get a really good private person inspection to see these things and ensure there's no issue. Some of these cars can also be found with ceramic brakes. It's a great uh, great great upgrade uh, and fantastic to have that on the car in the early models. Some of the later models came with them automatically. Less 550s came with them. Most of the 560s came with them. So again th these are just differences. This is one of the reasons the 560s usually had a higher sticker than the 550s as well. The all-wheel drive, the ceramic brakes, etc. And sticky buttons, while not as big of an issue in Lamborghini and Ferrari, are still prone to exist after 10 years of ownership. So keep an eye for that. It's a lot cheaper to fix Lamborghini sticky buttons than it is Ferrari. Uh, and also you'll notice the sticky buttons on the panel uh, that controls the windows. So there's a little center panel. That panel is right under the uh, navigation and it has all your little buttons. That panel typically goes bad on cars after like 10, 10, 12 years. It's very common, especially if there was a lot of motion and usage of it. It's roughly about 1500 bucks if you have to buy a new panel on, um, on eBay or one of these third-party sites where you can find a used one and they work pretty well. But historically, the car's pretty bulletproof. It's been recession-proof. These values have not changed pre-post-COVID. It's kind of always been there. So it's really, really strong of a hack and a really good car to go after. Now, if you're lucky enough to find a car like the one I just showed you at the dealership, which was the uh, rarest of rarest, which was a 550 model, like an LP, LP version of the Gallardo with a six-speed gated transmission, you're going to pay big money. Like I showed you that past car we just saw, that is a car that sells for 200,000 more than its counterpart with an e-gear transmission simply based on volume. I mean, no different than an LP640 gated selling for over a million dollars versus a non-gated one selling for 250. That's how big the gap is on some of these manual, rare, hard to get, very desirable late model exotics. So expect huge numbers, like huge numbers if you find an LP version Gallardo with a six speed. And you know, you're getting what you're paying for, but I think those are more collector cars than hacks. So that's why we're not talking about them. You just had the pleasure of seeing one specifically uh, and hopefully you've enjoyed it. So again, take the training, uh, regardless if you take the free training or join the cars, do it now. Uh, leave me a comment. Do you like the Gallardo? Do you think it's a good starter Lamborghini? I think it's one of the best, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll catch you next time for another Exotic Car Hacks video.